Right. Well, anyway, welcome back everyone. It's Joe and happy Halloween. It is Halloween. It's a beautiful sunny day. A little chilly out, but I'm still trying to get some riding in. But anyway, in today's video, um, it's been about a month since I've owned the, this Trident 660. Actually, a little over a month. So that's what we're going to discuss today. I'm going to talk about my one month ownership of the bike and its likes and dislikes. Uh, you know, of course, like anything, you know, you love anything new, of course, at first, and then you start using it, and then you start, you know, realizing, eh, I'm not too crazy about this, or I don't like this. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm in rain mode. I'm gonna get out of rain mode because I was driving around yesterday in the rain. Okay, so um, let's start with the, the likes on this bike. And then we'll get into the dislikes, because you know, everyone likes the likes. So as far as likes go, uh, first thing about the bike is looks. And of course that's subjective, but I love the looks of this bike. I think it's cool. I think it's kind of got like a, a modern but retro look to it. Uh, I know some people don't like the front end. They kind of think it's like stubby and short looking, but yeah, like I said, that, that's subjective. But for me, we'll start with the looks for number one. I really love the, the looks of the bike. And one of the reasons why I picked this over the MT-07 was because of the looks. I thought the MT-07 looked a little too, a little too sporty, and and would look silly for you know someone my age at the age of 50. So uh, that's looks. Second thing I like about this bike is, well, actually I should say love about this bike is the self-canceling turn signals. I love self-canceling turn signals. Uh, I think it's one of the greatest things. I didn't even know the bike had it until my first time riding it and they canceled it themselves out because I am notorious for not turning off my turn signals as anyone who's ridden with me will, will tell you. I constantly make a turn and then have my, my blinkers still going because I forget to turn them off. So that is a, a big, big plus. Uh, third thing I love about this bike is its agility. The bike is super easy to, to maneuver. Um, it's light when you're just handling it, you know, you're walking it up and down the driveway or the garage, or you got to back it into a parking space or something, or just maneuver it in general. It's super light and easy to walk. And then as far as riding, it, even better. It is super easy to, to maneuver when riding it. Just turning, you feel comfortable. Um, you know, leaning feels comfortable. It's just an all-around uh, agile bike that, that I really like. Uh, next, we're going to go into power. And this, of course, is subjective, too. Some people like more power. Some people want less power. Uh, for me, I think the power delivery is perfect on this bike, at least for now. Um, that may change you know, a year from now as I get more experience and more comfortable with the bike. Maybe I want something more powerful. But you know, coming off a Honda Rebel 500, uh, it's you know it's nice to actually feel power when I, I need to go. And not that the Rebel's a slow bike. The Rebel is you know 500 is adequate for you know most riders. But this definitely has when you twist the throttle, it it goes. And that's also I know a lot of people have complained about throttle response on this bike, and have you know said it it doesn't respond well. You know just ride by wire. But I wonder if a lot of that has to do with the bike's braking period. But I have no problems with the, the throttle response. I think this thing responds very well to the throttle. Uh, when I first got it, it seemed a little bit twitchy, but like I said, that might be the braking period. I'm almost at a thousand miles now, and it seems like it's smoothed out. So we'll go into, uh, we'll put power in there as, a, as another like. Um, another like is price. I, I mean, I don't think you can beat the price for a brand new bike, you know, eight grand for a, a bike of, you know, this, this size, this power, all the features it has, all the safety features, the anti-lock brakes, the traction control, the rider modes, um, the expandability, you know, you could add the Bluetooth module on, you could do, add a security system on, you can do the, uh, the quick shifter. Uh, so, I mean, price, I think this thing is, is amazing. Um, another thing is the display. I love the display on this, this split TFT and, and LCD display, I think is super easy to read both at night and daytime, and it is easily adjustable. So at night, there's times where I found it to be a little bit too bright. It is supposed to be self-adjusting, but even in my car, I don't like my, my 
dash, my instrument panel will be too bright, so I usually dull it down a little bit. But, you know, with the, the knobs on the, on the bike, the arrows, the, the thumb controls, you can easily just adjust the, the brightness, so if it's too bright for you at night. Uh, but no problems at all during the day. Very easy to see all your stats at a glance. You know, speed, uh, gear, your time, your mileage, uh, and it's all adjustable to, to what you want. So the display is awesome. Uh, another thing that we'll go into likes is the seating position. I actually love the seating position. I am super comfortable. I'm five foot nine, 155 pounds. Uh, I have no problems on this seat, especially long trips. Uh, the longest trip I've ever done is a little over two hours nonstop. And I have not had any issues as far as leg cramping or shoulder cramping or back. It's just very comfortable. Well, that's for me, you know, it, it may, may change for you, uh, depending on your, your size and your, your inseam and stuff like that. But I love the mid positions. They're a little bit back, which is, is pretty nice. So seating position, I think is excellent on this bike. All right, let's go. I don't see any trick-or-treaters out. I mean, I'm not really on a residential area, so. All right, scratch that. Um, next thing that I like is the clutch. It does have a slipper clutch. And I find the clutch to be very smooth. I find it to also be very forgiving. It's, you can sh shift pretty quick with this, which leads me to uh, not wanting to get the quick shifter. Originally, one of my plans was, all right, down the road, I'll get the quick shifter. And I guess maybe it's good that they're out of stock everywhere because it's kind of held me off from buying one. But, you know, I would just suggest to anyone who's got this bike, if you don't have the quick shifter, uh, or if you're buying the bike, don't get the quick shifter at first. Ride the bike for a little while um, and then come to a conclusion whether you need or want the quick shifter. I find this bike is super fast to shift. Most times I can shift without the clutch, at least upshifting anyway. But the clutch is very forgiving. Uh, many times you don't even have to press the clutch all the way, just you know, halfway down. Here, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to downshift here. I'll, I'll do it halfway. I didn't even press the clutch all the way in. And here I'm gonna upshift without the clutch. I mean, <laughs> it's like, I don't need a quick shifter. Save the money, get something else. And like I said, you can shift pretty darn fast without the, the clutch uh, upshifting. And even even with the, the, the clutch, you can shift. All right, here, now we're gonna shift without the clutch. I mean, come on. <laughs> you can't get any better than that. <laughs> That's with no clutch shift up shifting. Uh, all right, so I love the clutch or lack of using a clutch on this bike. I think it's awesome. Uh, next thing we'll discuss is, let's go into dislikes. Uh, I'm sure there's other things I love about this bike that I'm forgetting, but we'll go right into the dislikes. Number one, my number one gripe is service on this bike. Now, I don't like how Triumph wants you to bring it to them for everything. And by everything, I mean even oil changes. If you see it, I'll post the, the link up top here of my other video showing how to reset the service light, but you cannot reset the service light on your own with this bike, even if you do the oil change. At that 600 mile service, if you do the oil change yourself, you have to bring the bike to them to reset the service light, or else you get the annoying uh, service light reminder on your dash, and it takes up the, the bottom third of your, your screen. You can't dismiss it. So you have to bring it to them, and they charge you 70 bucks to just disable the service light, just to turn it off. That, that I can't believe that, uh, that a company would do that. So that annoys me. But like I said, I'll link the video. You can buy the Tune ECU app. Uh, it's Android only, unfortunately and um, buy a Bluetooth OBD2 sensor, which I'll actually, I'll link those here in this, uh, in the description down below for the ones that I used, which worked perfectly. And then I was able to reset the service light with uh, you know an app that you buy for $10 and a Bluetooth connector for 50. So 
Uh, that is one of my biggest gripes as far as service. They want you, I mean, even if you buy the Bluetooth module, you can't activate it yourself. You have to bring it to the dealer and they gotta activate it. Uh, same thing if you do the quick shifter yourself. You can't install the quick shifter without bringing it to the dealer for them to activate it. So that's kind of annoying. Uh, I, so that is my, my number one dislike about the bike. Um, my other thing is gas mileage. Now, I'm averaging about 45 miles per gallon, at least what my gauge is saying. 46 miles per gallon is what I'm averaging right now. I thought it would be more. I mean, maybe that's gonna change as the bike breaks in. Like I said, I'm just under a thousand miles and I don't ride too aggressive. Uh, actually, not that aggressive at all. I mean, every now and then I might, you know, get on a little just to have some fun. But I was expecting like in the mid 50s and I see online a lot of people say they're getting like in the 50s. So I don't know, we'll come back to that one. That one may just be the bike needs to break in more and mileage will increase. I am putting premium in and I can't find, if anyone's got a, a link or anywhere where it shows what type of gas to put in this bike, I cannot find in the manual what gas to put in. The first time I filled it, I did 87 octane. But I heard people saying, no, you need to put premium because it's a high compression engine, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. It's all over the place with people saying what, what to put and what not to put in this bike. So I've just been putting premium. It hasn't seemed to affect my gas mileage as uh, and, you know, going, getting better or worse. So I don't know about that. But gas mileage is another kind of disappointment for now, but that may change. Um, another problem or dislike is storage. This bike literally has no storage anywhere on it. I'm even looking for places to like hang a bag or something. Um, I've tried putting on a tail bag on the back, but the back the seat is so thin and narrow. I mean, even for a passenger, it's probably uncomfortable, but uh, you know, I can't really get a bag to fit on there correctly. And under the seat, there's zero storage. I mean, I've got paperwork under there. That, that's about it that I Velcroed onto the bottom of the seat with a little pouch, uh, but you can't fit any tools or anything under there. Uh, so storage is a dislike. Uh, another dislike is the rear brake pedal. The brake pedal is, it's very small and it seems cheesy. It's like, it feels like it's made out of like a thin metal. And I know a lot of people have already bent them by just dropping the bike, which I know dropping a bike will bend a lot of brake pedals, but you know, more other brake pedals seem a little bit more beefier. This seems like a very thin uh, metal, and it's it's hard to find with your foot. There's plenty of times I'm kind of searching around for it, hunting for it with my foot. Uh, it, it responds well though, but I just don't like it. Feels very very cheap and small. Uh, big pothole there. All right, another dislike is the. And it, this is also subjective, is the foot pegs. I think the foot pegs, I would be happier if they were rubber mounted on top to help reduce vibrations. And you really don't get too many vibrations with this bike coming up. But I think rubber uh, tops on the foot pegs would have been a, a nice touch. Um, another thing is dirt. The bike, the rear part of the bike gets pretty dirty. Uh, pretty quickly too. Uh, the front, not so much. And the good thing is you don't get dirt flung up on your back, you know, on your body, but the underside of the bike, like under the seat and on the shocks gets pretty dirty. I guess that's due to this, you know, due to this design. A lot of people don't like the, the lights on the back, the way they're mounted on that, that back arm. And a lot of people do the tail tidy kit where they tuck the lights back up under the, the rear seat. Me, actually, I like the looks of that uh, arm sticking out. That, like I said, that's you know, all a matter of preference, but I actually like that. But I think the design does cause the bike to get a little bit dirtier underneath. You know, my Honda Rebel 500 that I had, I, it always stayed clean no matter how much I rode it. I, I rarely had to, to wash it. This, I, I do see a lot of dirt build up, especially down by those, uh, those back shocks. And probably the, the last thing about this bike, as far as that I dislike, is the aftermarket support. Now, I know that's also because the bike just came out in 2021. You know, I've got the 2022 model. Um, and also I know a lot of things these days with COVID are 
you know, short stocked anyway as far as you know, getting stuff. But there doesn't seem to be a lot of aftermarket support for this bike. I'm looking for a, a better seat. I can't really find any good seats. I found some seat covers, and even those are kind of hard to find. Everything's either on back order or you know shipping from another country, and you know it's it's weeks but to get it, and it's just limited. But that, like I said, is is you got kind of got two things going on. You got you know the 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 supply shortage that we have with pretty much everything these days, and you've got the uh, fact that this is a brand new bike and not many aftermarket uh, products available for it yet. But hopefully that will change. So, all right, that's about gonna wrap it up. But those are my, my one month review on the Trident 660, my 2022, I've got just under a thousand miles on it and try to get as much riding as I can before uh, the weather starts really changing. You know, it is Halloween today, so happy Halloween. Everyone stay safe and have fun and stay tuned for the next vlog. Hopefully I will find a windshield that I'm still looking for that I wanna order and put on this and uh, we'll get that installed but I gotta find one first that I like. If you got any suggestions or have any windshields, put a link below. I know some people have um, suggested some different windshields for this bike, but I'm still, still on a quest. So, all right, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Happy Halloween, stay safe, and as always, have a great one. Later.